We're on Daf Mem Hey Omid Aleph. And we're up to Tanya Kalishna Kama Vitanya Kalishna Basra. And this you'll see approximately seven lines up from the bottom of the Omud, Mem Hey Omid Aleph. Let's just reiterate the two Lashonos of Shmuel. According to the first Lishna of Shmuel, Shmuel is coming to be Mekil, and you're only Chayev in Biur if two conditions are met. Number one, he has a Kezayis of Chametz in each crevice. In other words, for that crevice and the and the Isa, that amount of dough that's stuck in that crevice to be Chayev Biur, it has to have at least the size of a Kezayis. Again, I'm, we're not talking about adding together the various crevices and the Isa in each crevice. We're talking about one particular crevice has a concentration of a kezayis. And the second condition is that the chametz is eno asui lechazim. The chametz is not there, the dough is not there in order to strengthen the kli by filling in its crevices so that the water can't fall through, but rather he has full intention of removing those pieces of dough that got caught in the crevices. So they're only there on a temporary basis, they're not bottom. So if A, they are either less than a kezayis, or B, he intends to be mavatal them, and he wants to strengthen the kli. In any of those two cases, in any of those two scenarios, he would be not. He would not be chayiv in bir chametz. He's only chayiv in bir chametz if you could check off two boxes, namely it's a kezayis and it's eno osi lechazik, which means he has full intention of removing it. If those two conditions are met, then according to the Lishna Kam of, of Shmuel, Yechayev in Biru. Then we get to the Lishna Basra, which is the Machmir. And according to the second Lishna in Shmuel, either of those two conditions, if they're met, would generate a Chiv Biru. That means if either it's Kezayis, even if it's Osui, even if it's, um, even if it's Osui Lechazek, in other words, even though he intends to be mavatel, the Isa in the sedek in the crevice, and therefore you would have said, well, through Bittel, it's no longer Chametz, it's now part of the clean name. Says Shmuel in the second Lishna that since it has a Kezayis, that gives it Chashivus, and it stands out on its own because of the volume of a Kezayis. The second, uh, the second automatic generator of a chiv biur, even in a case of less than a kezayis, would be the case of of eno osui lechizuk, since he intends to remove that chametz that got caught in the crevices, even though it's less than a kezayis, that's enough to generate a chiv biur. So now the Gemara is going to bring two grisos, Tanya Kilishna Kama, so he's got the dough that's get, get got caught in the crevices of his kneading bowl. If he is interested in being mechazik, that's called makom ha'asui lechazik. And what that means is that it plugs up any of those crevices and the areva, this bowl now is strengthened, is then it's butter and it's not chotzitz. The eno over and the brysa goes ahead by analogy and applies the same principle to chametz. He will not violate Chavitz because it's Makoma Asui Lechazik. Now, the Makom She'en Asui Lechazik, which we said in the ratio of this Brisa, Makom She'en Asui Lechazik, Chotzitz. So that's the safe of the Brisa. So this again, the safe of the Brisa says that if he intends to remove the batzik because it doesn't strengthen his his kli, 
then it becomes a chatzitza, the over, and then he violates by Yerub HaYimotzah, because of Chometz from Pesach. But med murim. Now the Bryce is adding a qualification to the Seifa, where there is chatzitza, and we violate by Yerub HaYimotzah, Yechai Ben-Biru. That's only Bikizayas, that this Bote, which is Bimakom She'ena Osi Lechazik, meaning he has intention of removing the trapped dough, and therefore he violates by Rabbi Mate and it's Ech Tzitza because it's no longer Botel. That's only if there's a Kezayis worth. Aval Bipachos Mi Kezayis. Afilu b'mokom she'en osi lechazik, eno chotzeitz the eno oven. So even though his intention is to remove this dough, this botzeik, he still is not in violation of Ayurabai Motze because it's less than a kizayis. Now this brisa supports the lishna kama. Of Shmuel. It's identical with the Lishna Kam of Shmuel, which means the following. If it's a Mokom She'eno Osui Lechazek, so it's not there on a permanent basis in order to make the Kli, strengthen the Kli, then we have the condition that if Yeshbo Kezayis, then he's Chayim in Biu. If it's Pochus Mi Kezayis, then it's Bata. In the case of a Kezayis, if it's Asli Lechazek, his intention is to strengthen the Kli, then it's Batel, even though it's a Kezayis. So that there are two automatic bittles, or Mevatlim, if I could use that word. One Mevatel is the size of the Chameitz. If it's less than a Kezayis, that's considered a bittle. Even if it's Eno Asli Lechazek, and then there's a, right, that's in the case of Pachas Kezayis. Then we get to the case of Kezayis. And now we have to ask, is there another bit? If it's Asli Lechazek, then that itself is a, an agent of Bittal, despite the fact that there's a Kezayis. So Mamela, since there are two Mavatlim, the only scenario in which you be high of in beer is in the absence of both of these mavatlin, which means that number one, you have a kezayis, and number two, it's eno asli lechaz. Since it's eno chazli lechaz, if it's not bottled to the kli, and add to that, that since in a case where even if it's eno asli lechazik, which means it's not bottled to the kli, if it's less than a kezayis. V'tanya kelishna basra, botzeik shebesidre areva, v'mokom ha'osui lechazik. So right now we have a logical, compelling argument for bittel, because it's osui lechazik. He's going to leave it there on a permanent basis. He has no intention to take it out because it serves a tremendous benefit for the Kli. And here we turn to Memheyam and Beis. Eno Chotetz. So we have a case of Osui Lechazek. Now again, you know, until we get to the Bamed Varmamurim here in the second Raisa, we get the impression that Eno that if it's Osi Lechazek, it's Eno Chote, it's period, as an absolute statement. We don't need another condition to implement, to activate Bittel. We have, we have enough to activate Bittel simply because it's Mokum Osi Lechazek. That's wrong, what I just told you. But I'm just saying, if we read these words and only had these words without the qualification that we're going to have in the safe of this price, then it would seem that Makom Asi Lechazik is an is an automatic mavatel. The eno ov eno chotzitz the eno ov it. It's part of the kli. It's bottled to the kli. Why? Because it's Asi Lechazik. 
b'mokom she'ena osi l'chazik, and we'll come back to this word b'mokom in just a minute, because the word b'mokom is a little strange. I mean, it should be totally in the das of the person. So why did the Bryce use the word b'mokom? But in any event, if it's eno osi l'chazik, so then his intention is to remove that botzik from the sedek, and it's not bottom. It's number one, chotzeitz. So it messes up the tevila. And number two, the over. And he's chayv in beer because it's not bottle and it's chametz. Oh. Now, now we go back to the sefer because the Bamedvar Mur always goes back on the last, the last paragraph. So we have now a p'tur of biur in a case of ein osui. Just one second. Um, just one second. L- let me, uh, I'm sorry, I just get this. Again, in the ratio, we said it's a makoma osui lechazek. Oh, so my mistake. I stand corrected. The Mamedvar Mamurim is going back on the Resha. Let's see if that works out better. In the Resha, we said that since it's Eno Osri Lechazek, I'm sorry. In the Resha, we said it's Osri Lechazek. The problem here is with the word Ain, because in the mind, you know, the Ain sounds like a. Uh, Sounds like a negative factor, but the truth is that if it's osi lechazek, that's going to be, and that's going to activate bitter. So we said when we read the ratio, and we, I think rightfully so, we came to the, uh, the conclusion that the ratio is an automatic mavatel. Now the brisa in the sefer with the bamed vamur is qualifying that automatic mavatel to tell you it's not an automatic mavatel. There's another condition that has to be made, met, met. And by Medvar Murim, Bipachos Mikazais. So you need not only Osui Lechaze as a Sibas Bittel, you need another Sibas Bittel. You know, to piggyback on the first Sibas Bittel of Osui Lechaze, we have to add that it's less than a Kazais. Avo Bikazais. I feel the makom osui lechazik, which goes back to the ratio in a case of bittel. He wants it to strengthen the kli. Nevertheless, if the botek is a kesayis, that itself gives it an independent chashivus, and therefore chotzeitz the over. You know, I I understand the over. I don't understand so well the chotzeitz. We're not sure. Why Kizayas should be relevant to Chatzit. So Chatzit should depend upon whether he's Makbid or not Makbid. He intends to leave it there as part of the Kli, intends to remove it. No, no, no. The concept of Kizayas is not just a loch that's rooted in Machalas Asuras and a Mais Achile and Achile Pachs Me Kizayas, etc., etc. It's not just the Chashivas of a Chefta di Sura that requires the minimum volume of a Kizayas, but it's also a general halach in Chashivas. So we'll find, for example, at the end of Masech the Shabbos, in terms of Lechas Hotzah, you have to have Hotzah and a Kezayis. Why? Because that's considered Chashivos of a volume of a Kezayis. Here too, once we give it a Chashivos of a Batek, then despite the fact that it's Osi Lechazik, it's still a Chatzitza. It still has that chashivas and it wedges between the water of the mikvah and the walls of the kli. And this price, again, as we said before, is a clear cut proof to the Lishna Basra, which means that the only way and the only scenario in which we can activate Bithel and exempt you from Bir Chavit is if you have both A plus B. It's less than a Kezayis and it's also Lechaz. So we need A plus B, meaning two Sibos of Bittel that overlap, piggyback one on top of the other. When you have the two Sibos of Bittel, then and only then do you exempt him from beer. 
Now, here's an interesting question. When you have two brysos that contradict each other, what conclusion do you derive? There are two possible answers to that question. One is that one of the two brysos is what we call a Shabeshta. It's an inaccurate transmission. Throw it out. Then you have to flip a coin or find some sort of rules as to which price of the two we should insist is a non-valid, non-reliable price. The other possibility is to say that these two prices reflect two shitos in the Tanoi. And the Gemara says, Kashinad Dodi, meaning what road are you going to take? Omer Avuna, Same Kilto, Mekami Chamirta. Same means a race. One, which is called the kilta, in favor of validating the other, which is called the chamirta. So we have the two brysos. We're going to, Sami, we're going to drop the first brysa, completely omit it, you know, press the delete button on the first brysa. And why? Because it's lakula, which means that if either one of two conditions are ex- extended, then you don't have beer, either it's less than excise, even though it's Eno Asil Chazik, or it's Asil Chazik, even if it is a excise, throw that out, says Rav Khan, it's Rav Huna. Why? Because we have a principle of Suffolk Lechumra. Now, I'm not exactly sure why we have to assume Suffolk Lechumra here. The Gemara actually in the first parak says that once you do bittel, then the chi of beer is only to Rabbana. Let's call it Shemayom Aliachlo. There's no requirement of beer after bittel, which means that once we lower the level of beer from a Doraisa to Rabbana, we should be applying a different principle called Safeg de Rabbana Lekula, which in fact, the Gemara in the first parak implies that with regard to chametz, you know you have a, uh, you know you have a mouse carrying a piece of chametz, and you're not sure if it went into the house, you're not sure if it didn't, or if it went in, maybe it ate the the the, the chametz, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in all these cases, the Gemara says it all depends whether he had bittul or not. If he didn't do bittul, then you have a suffix to rice. If he was mavatol's chametz, you know called chamir dika brishusi levatol kevi kafre diamer, then he reduced it to a suffix to rabbanon, and we're going to apply the principle of lekula. Is Mimela, what we would suggest here is that the Gemara is operating with the premise that there was no Bittal. And therefore, it becomes Suffolk Doraisa Lechumra. And we have to accept the second Brisa and throw out the first Brisa. And in the note, that's exactly what he says in the name of the Tzlach. Kevach Esveke Doraisa Lechumra. So this is something we could have said on our own, but it's good to see it in the Tzlach. Oh, now, oh, here's where the Tzlach adds a point. Why does Rav, why, why does Rav Huna, <coughs> excuse me, assume that we're talking about a case where there was no bittel. He says, right? The language of the b'risa is, and the word v'over is inappropriate for a drabana, i.e. in a case where there was already bittel. Loshan over, mashmacha over bebal the imidu barkisha bito lohaya over. Vidohak loma shu bito sachavets ula kachlo over bibali ra. Maybe the, the, maybe the, uh, eno over is because there was bito chavets. Masha kosev over hakavana drabona, which would mean. That if Eno over because he was Mavatil's Chavetz, then the word over would mean in that same scenario that he violates Balyurabai Rotzim Midrabana. 
the Tzlach says that the Gemara was unwilling to explore or to jump on board with that possibility because to say the word over for a chiv that's that's not the that's not the right language. But I think if I understand the slach correctly, and I'm saying this with limited liability, that even in a case where there was bittel, we're going to require him to destroy his chametz. And the reason for that is because Sami, we got rid of the first price. But you know what? I think I'm going too far. Let me, let me backtrack on that. We're going to Sami because we're talking about a case where there was no bitter. Then we're going to reject that price. Because the price itself is addressing a case where there's no bitter. And the Raya says it's Sachis because it says over. But Lu Yitzur, it wasn't an issue of over, but rather an issue of Achiv Durabanan of Biru because we're after bitter then there's no reason why we should reject this price. Now Rav Yosef comes along and he says, I, I can't accept that, that methodology. You got two prices that contradict each other. So you're just going to choose the machmir and leave out the mekil and say that that price doesn't exist? Anoi shilkas mi alma? Are you assuming that there are no other tanoim in the belt? And therefore, all we have is these two prices, and they contradict each other, as if to say there's only one Tana in the world. And we're going to have to assume that the Tana either accepted the words of the first price or the second price, and therefore, the Chubra, we're going to accept the words of the second price. And therefore, says Rabbi Yosef, a better method would be to search throughout the literature of the Tanoim and see maybe we can accept and validate both brisos because they reflect different shitos in the Tanoim. That's exactly what Rav Yosef is going to accomplish now. I know you. I'm going to prove to you that both of these brisos are valid because each one reflects the sheet of a different Tana, and there's a major controversy on this very issue of Shmuel's two Lashonos, or rather the two brisos as we have. Okay. Now, by way of introduction to the brisa of Rav Yosef, we'll just mention that the Torah prohibits something called CR. CR is chametz, which is included in the lav of chametz, but it's not edible. It's used as a fermenting agent. It's what we call machametz isos acheros. So when you have already a dough that's on its way to fermentation, you would add CR in order to speed up the process of fermentation. I forget what it's called in scientific terms. Uh, if, if anyone could remind me, but there is something that uh, it's a an agent, the chemical agent that speeds up the fermentation process. Catalyst. Catalyst, yeah. Catalyst. Um, yeah, yeah, I heard you. I heard you the first time. But I think there's another word I'm looking for that's more specific. It's a specific kind of a catalyst for fermentation. Mitch, you have anything for me? I, you have to unmute yourself just one second. I can try to do that for you. In kitchen lingo, it's uh, sourdough. Sourdough. Okay. A and leavening, in chemical language? A leavening agent. A leavening agent. Okay. All right. I, I think, again, I, I still think there's a there's a chemical term for it. But yeah, leavening agent, souring dough, a catalyst, all the above are, uh, are correct. And that's called CR. And the tar is a separate lav for CR, including it under the general Easter of Chametz. Now, what they had was a pascha ipsha. So you have a loaf of bread, a piece of bread that with the passage of time became spoiled, but it still could serve as a machametz isos acheros, and therefore gets the status as of CR. Tanya, we learned in a Brisa, Pasha Ipcha, Chayev Levar, 
You have to get rid of this Pasha Ipcha, even though it's not edible. I'm not sure exactly why the Bryce said the word Kama. I would leave out Kama, but anyway, this is a case of CR, Pasha Ipsha, and the Torah prohibits it even though it's not Roy Lachila. And why? Because it's suitable to serve as an agent. Okay. Rabbi Shimon Lazar Omer, now again, this is a little bit of a of a sociology that maybe we're not so familiar with back at the time of the Gemara, but very often what they did was from sourdough, and I think if I'm not mistaken, they have this for children as a as a game as a toy. You can actually take that dough, and if it's if it's hard enough, you can you could make furniture out of it. And I think you'll see this in, out there in the market. I don't know in what country, but so if Shimon Alaza says, when are you obligated to destroy this? All right, now we're back on track. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. I had this, if you remember, a few weeks ago. I had a lot of trouble this morning with my Dafyomi share. The Zoom has is, is been acting up over here. I suspect it has something to do with the internet that I have here. But anyway, okay. But Avol Kofes, C.R. Sheyichtoli Yeshiva, if he has a very large, what we call a gush of C.R., and he designates it as a chair. In other words, it becomes actually a piece of furniture. Is betela or butla. In other words, it loses its status as chavitz. And therefore, according to Rabbi Shimon Gamaliel's point, there's no violation here of Balyura. There's no chivbir. It lost its status of chavitz. And this kofetz is what we call si'ar sheyichta liyeshiva. And it becomes a chair. That's what he that's what he does with it. In any event, there's no indication that Rab Shimon Begam Leel's heter of Yichta Liyeshiva is qualified, is conditional on the fact that it's less than a kazait. So the assumption now is that Rab Shimon Gamliel's point will apply and his heter will apply even in a case where you have a kezayis of, of CR, in this case, of Pasha Ipsha. So again, the Pasha Ipsha here would be included in the Chi of Biur as CR, except for the fact that he designated it for yeshiva as a piece of furniture. And this, despite the fact that it has a kezayis. Could you imagine dedicating for yeshiva a piece of Pasha Ipsha that's less than a kezayis? I mean, you know, maybe you could, you know, you could, I don't know what even an infant couldn't sit on it. So obviously we're talking about more than a kezayis. Now the Gemara wants to analyze the Tanakama from the fact that the Bryce, a quote of Chimagam, uh, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, it seems to indicate that the Tanakama rejected this. Mida Omar, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, that Yichtu Yeshiva Betela, Michlal, we should derive by, by logical inference, the Tanakama Sovar Lo Butler. That it's not butter. Now, what do you mean it's not butter? You designate it as a yeshiva, as a moshav. The answer has to be that because it has a kezayis, which means Tanakama requires two conditions in order to be mafkia beer. You have two mavatlim, as we called it. Number one, the mavatel is that yichtal yeshiva, and number two, the mavatel number two is that it's less than a kizayis. Alma kasova kol kizayis afagav the mavatel lo botel. And now the gemara is arguing in the name of Yosef that the two brisos that we had are really in effect two tanoim. 
the first brisa, which is the kula, could be Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. Now, it's a little bit tricky here because if you notice, the first brisa had two kulos against the second brisa. The kula that's the leniency that's most relevant to us right now is the case of of le of um, uh, what's the language of um, of makoma asli lechazek, right? Because makoma asli lechazek, in the case of the botek between you know in the stockim, is exactly parallel to the case of yichdali shiva, and that according to the first brisa, which was the first lishna of Shmuel, is an automatic mavate, even if it's got more than a kazayis. So that Rav Shimon Gamliel fits like a glove with the first Brisa Lakula in the case of Asui Lukhaz, which parallels Yichta Yeshiva. But here's where it gets very sticky. If you recall, the first Brisa had another Kula, and that was in Pachos Mikazayas, in the case of because if it's Eino Asu Lechazek, his intention is to remove it. So you don't have the bittel of Yichtol Yeshiva or Asu Lechazek in the case of the of the kneading bowl. But what you do have, says the first price, is Pachos Mikazayas. It's very hard to pin Rav Shimon Gamliel down to that position. All Rav Shimon Gamliel was pointing out is that there's an automatic, absolute mevatel that undermines the in the case of Yichel Yeshiva. He never whispered a word about another alternative automatic mevatel, namely a pachos mikazayis. It's very difficult to commit Rav Shimon Gamliel to a second automatic mechayat. I mean, automatic mevatel, that would be the better word. But now let's get to the second brisa. The second brisa really matches up with the Tanakama of Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel. Rav Shimon Ben Aloza, sorry. If I say Ben Gamliel, you'll, you'll know I mean Ben Aloza. Because the Tanakama says that even in a case of Lichtel Yeshiva, that's not an automatic uh, Mavatel. You need and you require that it has to be Pachas Mikazayas. So that the sheet of two mavatlim, both of which are necessary, in other words, you piggyback one on top of the other in order to undermine the chivir, that sheet which is ex- formulated in the second b'risa is identical with the sheet of the Tanakama, the way we're interpreting it, in the case of Yichtel Yeshiva. Is that clear? Let me just go over that one more time. So in, in Yichtel Yeshiva, the Tanakama holds that it's got to be Pachas Mikazayis, which means you need A plus B in order to be Machia Bir. And that's exactly the second Bryce. In effect, what we're doing now is, based on Rav Yosef's logic, we are salvaging the first Bryce based on an overlap, but it's only a halfway overlap. What I mean to say is that Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar is overlapping with the first brisa, with a kula, in a case where it's yichta liyeshiva. Now, is it a kezayis or less than a kezayis? I don't know. Rabbi Shimon, Gabriel, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar didn't, didn't commit himself to that position. Therefore, Amalei Abaye, Abaye turns to Rabbi Yossi and he says, kezayis tiratsta, Meaning, you have re- successfully recon- reconciled the two brisos with regard to a botek of a kezayis in a case of yichta liyeshiva. So if it's yichta liyeshiva, right, which is equal to asli lechazik in the case of the botek ben well, the first price is going to tell you that you don't need you don't need beer 
according to Rav Shimon Gamliel, and, and that price uh, reflects the sheet of Rav Shimon Elazar. And the second price uh, requires Biur, despite the fact that it's what? That it's Osi Lechazik or Yichta Liyashiva. But Pachos Mikazai Smiti Ratzta. We have another stira, if you recall, between the two brisos before we get to the case of um, Pasha Ibsha. And that was what happens if you have a batek, which is Eno Osi Lechazik. So you don't have the Mavatal of Osi Lechazik. There's no benefit to the Kli. He's going to remove this, this batek, but it's Pachos Mikazayas. And the first price said that Pachas Mikazayas is an independent and automatic mevatel. Even in the case of what? Of Ein Osui Lechazek. And this concept of an absolute automatic mevatel of less than a kezayis, even if it's Ein Osui Lechazek, does not find any expression in the Shita of Rav Shimon ben Elazar. You can't commit, you can't pin down Rav Shimon ben Elazar to that position. It's very possible that Rav Shimon ben Elazar holds that Yichta li Yeshiva, which is the same as Osu Lechazik, is an automatic Mavata. But Pachas Mikazayas, he never said that that's an automatic absolute Mavata. And I think what Rabbi is pointing out here is that Rav Yosef, you jumped the gun because if you want to identify the first brisa as the shita of Rav Shimon Lazar and therefore salvage the first brisa and validate its, its authoritative status, you can't convince anybody that the first brisa reflects the opinion of Rav Shimon ben Elazar, because Rav Shimon ben Elazar is not committed as the first price is to the Pachas Mikazayis Mavatel, as an absolute independent Mavatel. And therefore, what Abai is going to try to do now is come up with an alternative reconciliation of, of the two prices. <laughs> Says Abaye. And for this next Gemara, we really need, we need like a whiteboard, you know, because the Gemara now is gonna is gonna split, is gonna split Asui Asui le into three different categories. So let's just, I don't know if this will help or not. I'll just make the following introductory comment that the Areva, this uh, bowl can be broken down into three different parts, three three segments. There's what's called the Shule Hareva, which is the floor, the bottom part. There's the Dafna, the Dafanos of the Areva on the, on the, so to speak, the walls. Or the, and then there's Svasa Areva, which is the rim on top. Okay, we'll see if that helps anybody. So we're talking now about reconciling these two brisos according to Rav Shem ben Elazar, who accepts the principle of Yichbal Yeshiva or the principle of, of Asu Yilichaz. Low cash. There's no contradiction between these two prices. Basically, what Abai is going to try to convince us is that both Brysos agree with regard to the status of Shule Hareva, which means the floor of the bowl, the bottom of the bowl. Why? Because when he pours the water into the flour, the water has not yet really mixed totally with the flour because he hasn't yet done what's called licha kneading. And therefore, he desperately needs these 
bitsekos that are filling in the holes to protect, to strengthen the bowl in a, in a way that to protect the Mayim from going through the crevices. Again, we're in a state, an early state of creating an Isa, which is called the Sinas HaMayim, but we have not yet reached the state of Lisha. In this case, when we're talking about Shule HaKedera, Shule HaReva, to be more precise, then the Brisa is going to establish that you have no chiv biur on the botzeik stuck between the you know the crevice in, inside the crevice crevices, even if it is a kezayis worth. Why? Because that is a bittel of the first degree. We're going to now, again, we're now taking the concept of osi lechaze and subdividing it into different degrees of Asi Lechazek. There's the Spitz, there's the most profound Asi Lechazek, which is in the Shulei Areva. Because when he pours the water in at stage one, and it hasn't yet mixed with the Kemach, that water needs to be protected inside the... We have to guarantee that it doesn't seep through the crevices on the bottom of the Areva. And in that case, you have the most profound bittel of Asi Lechazek, such that even a Kezayis' worth of Chametz is bought. Then we get to the second level, which is called the Defanos of the Areva. Okay, now, here you have what's... And, and remember, I asked you before what the word Makom means, when it says Makom Asi Lechazek. We have a makom ha'osi lechazek, even with regard to the defanos of the areva. However, this is what I call a second degree chizuk. What do I mean? He wants the botek to stay there in the crevices, to remain there, but only during the process of lisha. Because during the process of lisha, when he mixes everything together in the bowl, in this mixing bowl, he wants to make sure that as much botzeik as possible will result from this process of lisha. He doesn't want the botzeik to get diminished or lost by entering into these crevices. So if he has botzeik from a previous lisha that is filling in these crevices on the, on the sides of the bowl around, that for him is a good thing. But it's only a temporary measure. It's only really good not to change the structure of the Kli, but Bishas Lisha. Those are the two key words, Bishas Lisha. And here, in this context of what we call the Fanos Hareva, we're going to ask the question how large of a chunk of Batek does he have? Is it Pachas Mikazayas? Or is it a kezayis? We're setting up a, um, almost like a, I'm not sure which word to use, but like a fulcrum. You know, you have two elements here in the equation. When one goes up, the other goes down. One goes down, the other goes up. And we try to create a functional relationship between them. So what we're trying to establish here is that if you have a full-fledged, absolute, Chazi uh, lechazek, right? What we call asli um, lechazek, and that's going to be in which makom? In the makom called the shule akedera, the bottom of the kedera. Oh, if you're going to give me a grade of a hundred for the asli lechazek element in the case of shule akedera, uh, in the case of shule akedera, then that's an automatic mavat. And I don't need to introduce another mavatel pochus mikazayis, and this mavatel in the bottom of the of the of the mixing bowl is going to be an absolute automatic independent mavatel, even if there's a kizayis. However, when we get to the next level, which is not a hundred percent of an osi lechazek, 
It's only a kind of temporary osli lechazik that contributes to the kli and benefits the kli during the process of lisha, as we said before, b'shas lisha, because that's when the dough is climbing up to the sides of the of the vessel. Here, we have what I call a knapper, you know, osli lechazik. It's a, uh, it's a it's 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 not a full fledged osli lechazik. And then it needs another condition of what? Of Pachos Mikizayas. So therefore, Abai says, Lo Kasha. Ha b'makom lisha, v'hasha lo b'makom lisha. Oh, so what's makom lisha? We, we spoke about shas lisha. And Abai plugs in shas lisha. Into the terminology of the Brisa, which is called Makom Lisha. What is the Brisa adding by, by using the terminology Makom Lisha? It's telling you that now we're talking about the Defanos of the Areva. And now we can begin to understand that when the Brisa speaks about the Defanos Areva, it uses the terminology makom she'ein asui lechazik. Why? Because it's not asui lechazik mayim. It's already in the lisha stage. There's no mayim anymore. So you don't need, you know, you're dealing with a dry substance. You don't need any sort of cracks and crevices to prevent the mayim from seeping out, out of the vessel. There are, there's no mayim. Therefore, with regard to a makom she'eno osi lechazek, which means be makom lisha, according to the first brisa, we don't really, the arev itself doesn't have any desperate need for this botek. Because the desperate need for the botek expresses itself only in terms of the shas nesina samayin, but not the shas lisha. Shas Lisa is a, it, it 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 serves as a temporary temporary aid, but not a, you don't need a structural change in the areva itself. Is in such a case, since the areva doesn't need profoundly doesn't profoundly need the botek that is filling into the cracks and crevices of the sides of the vessel, therefore. It's not bottle, but there is an element here of chizukakli, which is ma'at chizuk. It's not a real makom. It's not really lechazik. Uh, it's not really asli lechazik, but it is asli lechazik. With a, in a, on a temporary measure with regard to chaslicha, when you have a botek, when you have an isa, you have a dough already, the water is no longer a separate element, separate ingredient on its own. It now is completely absorbed in the dough, in the isa. And now we want to make sure that he gets the maximum, you know, the, the, the maximum for his buck, meaning that he gets the full isa and he doesn't lose part of the isa to the crevices on the sides of the vessel. In that case, when we have to some extent again, it's not the Mokom Asui Lechazik. The terminology Mokom Asui Lechazik is uh, singularly reserved for Shulei Akdeiro. And there, Mokom Asui Lechazik, as we said, is the most profound Asui that works on an independent level. And Accomplishes bittel such that we couldn't hear less about kizayis or pachos mikizayis. But when we get to the level of shas lisha, so that the cracks and the crevices are in the makom lisha on the sides of the finest of the kli, here for sure, during the process of lisha, it is helpful and beneficial to have these uh, pieces of botek in the sides of the kli. But nevertheless, it's not osi lechazik. And my nafkemino, 
It all depends now on whether it's a kezayis or less than a kezayis. If it's less than a kezayis, then we're going to be with tariff A plus B in order to create a mavata. Number one, in the volume of the batek, it's less than a kezayis, and therefore it lacks in chashivus. That projects us towards bit, but that itself is not enough. But add to boot the fact that it's also lechazik b'mikzas at least b'shas licha, and it is beneficial for the kli per se. It becomes part of the kli to some extent. That if it's pachas b'kizayis, we can add those two elements together and create bit. I'll just read to you his translation here. He writes. So if it's got a kezayis, it's not bottle. When it's already in stage Number two of Isa. Yeshem Eshav Shefin. Yeshem Eshav Shefin Veloshin. So it means when you rub this dough and you knead it, then it's Moel Ma'at Lechazek Esa Isa. Is then if it's a Dover Muat, then it's bottle. If it's less than a Kezayis, in this uh, crack and crevice in the Areva, then it's bottle. Because it does help the Areva, at least during the Shas Elisha, and it's less than a Kezayis. Now, with regard to Shule Akadera, the Brysa used the term because as we said, that's when he's pouring in the water. And Bishuli Akadir, he certainly needs this bottle. Now, with regard to Makom Ha'asui Lechazik, ain't no overall of a filu because Oh, so we, we were on the right track. Even if there's a Kezais, this is the first Brysa. In the case of Asui Lechazik, which means the Shuli Akadir on the bottom, that is permanently keeping the water out, or in, I should say, right? But from flowing out and keeping it in. Then there's no Balyurah by Yibatze, there's no Chibir on this Batze, on this, even if it's a Kizaz. That's called Makoma Asui Lechaz. Oh, so that Tana of the first Brysa is talking about a case where the botzek was stuck in the stuck him on the daphnos of the kedera, and as a result, we say that it's machazik to some extent. And if it's less than a kezayis, it will be bottle. There's no chiyuv biur. However, the brisa never addressed the third location, the third mako. Which is not only Eno Osi Lechaze in the Daphno Sakadero, but it's on the Safa Eliona of the Areva. He would certainly agree that in that case, there's no Bittel at all. It doesn't help even Chaslicha to have Botsek there. This is just Botsek that stuck on the rim. You'll see it if you look at the, you know, when you wipe the Tzchal, you'll see it. And in such a case, it's not in the Makam Lisha. It's not even in the Makam Lisha. It is complete. It, it, there's no element of Bittu whatsoever. And therefore, even if it would be Pachas Mikazayas, you would have to get rid of it. Hasha Loba Makam Lisha. The second price, however, has a different terminology. And it refers to the Spasa Revel Yona, the top rim, which is Eno Makam Lisha Klal. As a makom she'eno osin lechazik, and therefore, if it's not helpful neither for the for the water or for the botzik, it's on the rim, on the outer rim, on top. Therefore, with regard to makom she'eno osin lechazik, he violates balyurah by even on a pachos mikazayis, 
with regard to the Defano Sarreva, the second Bryson calls it a Mokam Asli Lechazik, and therefore it all depends upon whether there's a Kezayis or not a Kezayis in, in one place. That's called a Mokam Sha'asi Lechazik. The second Bryson never addressed the case of Shuli Akadera and would be molded that in Shuli Akadera, because of the very profound need for this Bate to prevent the Mayim from seeping out, you would have an automatic mavatel to be mafkir the chovas beer, even if there's a kezayis. So basically, what Abai does is by dividing up the areva into three parts and telling you that the difference between the first price and the second price is that the first price is addressing these two parts of osu lechazik and ain osu lechazik, without mentioning or relating at all to the the Sfas HaAreva Yona. The second rice, on the other hand, uses the terminology of Osui Lechazik and Eid Osui Lechazik in a different way. Eid Osui Lechazik is referring to the Sfas HaAreva Yona. And there, even if it's less than excise, nothing's going to do. A Makama Osui Lechazik is a reference to the Defanos of the Areva. And there it depends upon whether it's a kezayis or not a kezayis, and that's exactly what we saw in the first b'risa. And the second b'risa, without even relating to the most profound case of osu lechazik, namely, in a case where it's b'shulei akadera on the bottom of the kadera, the second b'risa would agree that in such a case, it's never considered a chotzeit. It's never chayv and biur, because it's such a profound level of of benefit of, of adding and protecting the kli and, and its function, such the water doesn't seep through, and it's so permanent that that itself is an automatic mavatal, even if he has a kizat. And the mela, we have all the rules of the game, and we just integrate the two prices into those rules of the game in such a way that there's no steer between the two prices. That was a bias PhD thesis in order to reconcile the two the two prices. Okay, Rabosai? So that's what we have for today. And I apologize for any sort of uh, malfunction here in the Zoom. <laughs> that's just what happens from time to time.